there is a particular type of game that thrives on the concept of the game. The novelty of the concept is what drives people towards enjoyment beyond simulation, beyond gameplay. It's really the, the conceptual humor of the um, concept behind the game that makes people want to play. I call these types of games popcorn games. I call them popcorn games because they're really about that initial pop more so than subsequent plays. They're, they're about, um, when I play popcorn games with people who like a particular popcorn game, they usually are, it seems like they're engaging with it and enjoying with it based on the initial humor of the game, the, the first chuckle they got when they saw a particularly humorous card or something that tickled them. Most of these games I don't find that funny. I, I think they're, um, they're just, uh, they're maybe a little too overtly humorous and maybe um, obvious in a way. Regardless, it, I, I'm not going to get into the uh, minutia of, of humor because we all have different senses of humor, but I don't usually find them funny. There is one, however, that um, tickles me in particular, and that game is Hamlet. So before I get too, too into what uh, Hamlet actually is as a game and what the mechanisms are and all of that, um, I think I will save you some time. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to tell you the concept of Hamlet. Because generally, if you don't enjoy the concept of a popcorn game, you're not going to enjoy the gameplay itself. Though so you might in the case of Hamlet, because it is interesting in its way. So, here we go. The concept of Hamlet is that each of the players is a different voice in William Shakespeare's head as he's writing the play Hamlet. And each voice in his head is trying to get the play to end in a particular way. And so the gameplay is all towards that end, guiding the, the plot of Hamlet so that it ends in the way that you want. Now, if that grabs you, you should keep watching this video and maybe learn more or find out more about the game in another way. You, there's other ways to find out about the game other than this video. Um, if that doesn't interest you, uh, you could probably stop the video right now because the game probably won't interest you. Here we have the game all set up. Now, most popcorn games tend to be card games. This one has a, has some cards, the ending cards, but it isn't, and I guess these could be considered to be large cards, but I don't think they're used like cards. So I'm not gonna call them cards. Um, this one does not use cards. Uh, we have the game set up here. These markers don't come with the game. I provided my own red pawns. You don't have to use red pawns. You can use whatever you want. Um, I recommend whatever you use fits in the square somewhat. It can overlap a little bit like my red pawns do. I can still tell which number this red pawn is on even though it overlaps the lines. Alright, so we have the game set up and what are we going to do? Well, let's look at our ending cards to know what we need to do. So here we have three ending cards. Players are going to get dealt these secretly at the beginning of the game and you keep your ending cards secret until the end of the game, either when, after you've won or after someone else has won, you can be like, oh, well, this is what I have, oh, this is funny. Um, so if we look at two Horatio, you see that there's different characters and different states that they have to have. If that's the case at the end of what's called an act, which is a round of turns, um, then you can reveal it and you win. So let's look at, at two Horatio and Look at the different states here. So if we see Hamlet dead, Hamlet's alive right now, this is face up. If, the, if Hamlet were dead, we would turn Hamlet's sheet and we'll just wipe those off there, face down, and then Hamlet's dead. And if Hamlet's dead, you know, people who have Hamlet in another state, like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are alive and well and living in England, Hamlet in England, if Hamlet's dead, then this person could no longer win the game, though he could tie for success with everyone else by having no one get theirs. All right, so there's that kind of take that-ness, which also exists in a lot of popcorn games. You can try to kill off characters that are important to other people. Um, all right, keep going. Laertes dead. Where's Laertes? He's right here. So if this is turned over, that's, that condition is met. Horatio married to Ophelia. So if you look here, there's a little box here. Mary to Ophelia. The game suggests you use a pencil to mark boxes. There's boxes all over the place. I want to play the game multiple times, so I don't do that. I just got these little cubes from the game Tempest. Tempest happened to come with lots of little extra cubes that aren't part of the game um, for some production reason, I suppose, or 
ostensibly so you can adjust Tempest to your liking. But I find they're about the right size for this game. They're a little big for this three stack here, but I use cubes. You could use a pencil with a good eraser, um, though this is a Dixon Ticonderoga number two, and I find they have a really nice eraser. Um, but even one of these, I think, over time would create some wear on the paper. So that's not for me. I like, I prefer the cubes. So on your turn, during each act, you're going to have a number of actions based on the number of players playing, and there's a little table that tells you that. Um, actions, you see all these things on the cards here? Each of those is an action, so there are a lot of potential actions, and we'll get into how to deal with that in a moment. Um, so you do an action. Some of them can only be done a number of times equal to the boxes on there, so Hamlet's Father's ghost appears to Hamlet. That can happen up to three times in this story. And I recommend, as you're picking these actions, to have someone record what happens so you have a little script when it's all done or a little script outline. Um, so you do an action. You can't always do an action, though. Each action has a requirement. This one requires Laertes to be in Denmark. So if I wanted Laertes to warn Ophelia about Hamlet, I'd first have to check Laertes' card and be like, oh, yep, he's in Denmark, so he can do that. And then Ophelia would lose a sanity. She's got a sanity track up here. And then we would check this action. And again, I'm using cubes, but you could use a Dixon Ticonderoga number two pencil or um, whatever other pencil you enjoy. I wouldn't want to use pen if I were you. Though perhaps you could put, um, you could laminate them and use like a whiteboard marker. That might work. So I would think, you know, over numerous plays, you might get some smudging as a result of that. So you may be wondering, why would you want to lower Ophelia's sanity? Is there an ending card that says Ophelia needs to have a sanity of five? I don't believe there is. I haven't looked through every ending card, but in my plays of the game, that card has never come up. Um, or that condition, win condition has never come up. Uh, there's all these results, though, that you want to have. For example, Hamlet dying, Hamlet being in England, uh, Gertrude dying, Laertes being in Denmark. Horatio, loyal to Laertes, lots of different things. And that's where this uh, player aid comes in. I had, I got this game used, um, and this player aid came with the game. I recommend getting this for as many, uh, a number of copies of this player aid for as many people as you want to play because really <laughs> necessary if you don't want to go crazy. There's a, there's a lot of chain reactions. You have to do this, to do this, to do this, to do this to get the initial, the eventual result you want to have in this this uh, strategy guide, which is not really a strategy guide. I think it should just be a player aid. Um, it's three pages. You need one of these per player, or um, be very patient people. Um, all right, so it's got some general things, like if you want to kill someone, just generally anyone, how you can do that. Um, it's got, so say if you want to kill specifically Laertes, First, you would need to kill Polonius or Ophelia, and then see their guide to figure out how to do that, and then send Hamlet to England to beef up his sword fighting skill, because you learned to sword fight in England. And then Laertes challenges Hamlet to a duel. Laertes, oh, oh yeah, Hamlet stabs Laertes with his own sword. So that's a way you can kill Laertes. If you want to keep Laertes alive, it tells you how to do that. If you want Laertes in France, it tells you how to do that. But oftentimes, there's a number of steps you need to follow, and that can be kind of like, it takes a certain kind of um, mood, maybe, slash brain, to enjoy that process of doing this, to do this, to do this. And if you enjoy that, that's why you might enjoy this game, even if the concept doesn't grab you. Uh, I think it definitely helps to have the concept grab you or tickle you in some respect. But um, there's a lot of that kind of, like, going down this rabbit hole, and that's a lot of the gameplay. Once you've worked that out, it's kind of just pushing and pulling, and then you kind of, with the other players, and getting to the level of maybe where you're kind of metagaming, and, well, not quite metagaming, but thinking about what sort of ending cards they have, and how you can work with what actions they're going to do, so that you don't have to spend your actions on things that the next player might do, or how to counter another person from winning. Hamlet! 